Podcast. My name's Rob Howard, and this week I'm joined by Patrick Kay and Adam Scott. Hello. You can contact us on email at notplayingpodcast at gmail.com or follow us on Twitter at notplayingpod. Polygon put out a review of the 1080 card today and said that basically it's definitely worth getting if you're not on the 900 series yet. But if yeah. you're on the 900 series, it might be, be- you might be better off waiting for the uh, TI version next year. Yeah, yeah I, I, cause nothing at the moment is pushing my card more more than it can go. So I, I don't think I see any performance difference for, from from any of these upgrades. But I think it's I don't think it's going to be very long until that's not the case because a bunch of developers have them now. A bunch of developers are going to be making stuff. The, the, if, if Steam's anything to go by, that the the software's being made pretty quickly. I think. I think it's going to be, it's not going to be long before people are using up the full B for the new cards, the Pascal cards. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's yeah, it's so cool though. It's such it's such good timing. Yeah, it's, it's great. I, t- I tell you what isn't uh, taxing my card, uh, <laughs> and that's and that's Doom. <laughs> the new the new Doom. Uh, yeah, Tell us it's about not Doom. Breaking. Yeah, it's not breaking a sweat. I, I, it started, didn't put everything up on maximum when I started loading it. So I thought I'd go in and I ranked, ramped everything up. And even the, uh, the new, it's the new id Tech 6 engine that it's running on. And, uh, it's even got like low, medium and high for the amount of like performance information you want on screen. So it will tell you like how hot your CPU is running. Not a lot of games have that. <laughs> um, so it was really anal, but, um, yeah, so I'm running it really well. But anyway, yeah, the new Doom, uh, it's it's a total throwback. Um, there's It's no nonsense, no messing about. Uh, the protagonist in the game doesn't give a fuck. He doesn't want to hear about any plot or nonsense like that. <laughs> um, he's, you know, like, there's a point very early on in the game after you've stoved in several demon skulls that, uh, like, uh, there's someone, uh, the guy who does the voice of Optimus Prime is playing a, a, a kind of, guy who's trying to get in touch with you and he, he's like we need you to be on this floor and he just like throws the radio on the floor and just stamps on it and just you carry on um <laughs> yeah it's just total <laughs> madness um like it's totally tongue-in-cheek uh it looks really great um it's really fast um you get the shotgun very early on and you're you know uh taking out um what they they called pinks. I forget all the names of the different demons, but yeah, uh, yeah. pinky demon. Yeah, uh, there, there's the ones that throw uh, fire at you. Um, so yeah, like probably the, the, the yeah the imps. Yeah. Um, so one of the mechanics early on is these things called glory kills, and it becomes an integral part of the game because you've basically got these what they call the possessed, which are just these kind of z- zombies, for lack of a better word. They don't really do. They they they'll attempt to melee you but they're very easily dispatched one shot and um and then you follow up with a glory kill which you use whatever button you want to bind it to um and then that will perform like uh one of several uh sort of canned two second animations while you you know you might rip their arm off and then beat them around the head with it or if you if you're coming at them from a, a, a higher vantage point like you can land on like shoot them then literally jump on them hit the button at the right time and you'll just like stamp on their face or whatever so they they've made that all quite uh, elegant in in the most gruesome way uh, elegant yeah but it is it's like it, it's when when you get I'm on I've only I'm only on the third mission at the moment but as you it starts to become like a dance because you've got like you know you've got those enemies you know they're going to fire at you uh, one of 
there's a guy charging after you <laughs> and you're like trying to sort of like outmaneuver him by getting up high you can uh, mantle onto things it's quite funny actually because um you'll you'll start going for uh, to try and make jumps that you <laughs> that you will hilariously not make but you'll go oh i wonder if i can because like you only have to kind of get near the edge of that ledge or whatever and you'll pull yourself up so yeah. you start to get a little too sure of yourself but you kind of are able to gauge it eventually um so yeah it's it's pretty straightforward uh the there's like a weapon upgrade system which basically allows you to sort of modulate what your alternate fire is but it's not like an alternate fire where you know right mouse button unleashes a grenade or whatever you actually like hold it down so like the machine the the assault rifle um has two different uh upgrade options and the one I chose uh, was like a uh, sort of Iron Man style uh, missile volley. Yeah. Um, so you have to sort of you have to sort of train your weapon on the enemy for a bit, hold that button down, and then press uh, your your primary attack to unleash that. Um, so yeah, I've only got I've got the plasma rifle. I've got the chainsaw. The chainsaw is almost like a smart bomb in that. You basically, the more fuel you have, the more guaranteed one-shot kills you've got. So if you're in a real tight corner and you're low on health, um, then then they're really good for one for dispatching foes straight away. Sorry, the thing I forgot to mention about the glory kills is that you get health back from them. So every glory kill you perform, you get health back. So that's also part of the uh the dance as it were when you when you know you're low on health you'll start sort of getting within melee range of things or it's it's really cool it's 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 i, I love the economy of the the weapon loadout um it's probably i've only like i say i'm only three levels in so it's probably going to get more there's going to be more options uh i haven't got the rocket launcher yet although i know i'm aware that's a thing and the chain gun and rocket jumps apparently I, oh, does does rocket jumps work? Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, I think it does. What was I playing the other day where rocket jumps worked? Or am I just going insane? Yeah. Overwatch? May, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah. Uh, no, Doom's really fun. Um, I, I wasn't expecting too much, but, uh, uh, you know... it. <laughs> When it first when it first hit and the beat it was on, there was nothing but I don't know why I'm surprised, but there was nothing but whining about about the multiplayer stuff and how Bethesda had ruined it and it was a travesty and everything else. And then the single player game, people get their hands on it, and I have heard pretty much everyone saying it's amazing, it's great fun, it's it's what Doom should have been and everything else. Yeah, well, that's um, what Doom is. It, it, yeah, it I was know. a single player game. I I, I remember. <laughs> I played. I I did. Um, I got into the uh, closed beta of the multiplayer of Doom, and I had a quick go of it. And I just thought, I just felt like it was just like Quake. You know, it's just how I imagine Quake yeah. being. Um, yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that, but that's not really what I'm after, really. Um, I I just want to kill some demons and not get owned. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, oh, the level design's pretty cool. There's lots of secrets and stuff if you can be bothered to look around a bit. You pick up these like old little these little doom bots, and it plays the original music, and and that actually feeds into the upgrade system as well. So the more sort of exploring around you do, the more sort of upgrades you will unlock for your weapons and armor. Yeah, I, re- I saw something on I saw something on Reddit which was kind of it was kind of nice because I remember some time ago there was a uh, you know one of these funny little diagrams that someone put on comparing FPSs from like 1995 and 2005 and you know 1995 was this huge sprawling map with lots of loop through and secrets and, and tunnels and multi-levels and it was on for ages and on the 2005 it was like a, a corridor with a with, with, with two like right angle bends in it and, oh, yeah, and, just and about the every line. quarter there was like cutscene you know cutscene yeah. <laughs> through. and I thought it was very much right because it was very much on rails and then we said but then they'd taken that image and they'd added the, the very detailed map book and saying yep 2016 doom thank you thank you we're, we're back where FPS ought to be yeah. and, uh, and that's one of the things that I, I'm actually quite looking forward to playing it because you know this year there's an awful lot of games I'm actually interested in last year was the, the year of the open world games and uh, you know, I've, I've lamented that many times. I won't do it again. But this year, I'm kind of 
uh, I'm kind of excited by the fact that people are going, you know what? Games used to be fun when they did other things as well. Yeah. So maybe we could, maybe we could take those other things and make them into modern games as well, rather than just constantly trying to make everything the same open world game that everyone else is mm. doing at the moment. Yeah. And Doom is kind of like a, 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 a nod to that, I think. I can't, I couldn't be happier. It's, it's in the world and as good as, uh, and as good as people are saying it is. I can't, I, I, I'm not going to be getting it anytime soon because of my schedule, but, um, I know that when I do get a chance to play it, perhaps when, Perhaps when my, my lovely wife takes herself and the kids off to Poland for a week, <laughs> I might uh, immerse myself in Doom for a bit and just completely vegetate back to when I was 20 years old or <laughs> younger, in fact. The, the, uh, I challenge you not to uh, totally rock out to the, the soundtrack as well. It's oh, like, it's like the, this original riff, isn't it? The original... Yeah. It's actually by Clint Mansell who did the soundtrack to the movie because I was looking to see if it was on Spotify and yeah. all I could find was the soundtrack to the movie. Um, oh, okay. Which less yeah, said about I that. Think I've, I've got one of his soundtracks. I can't remember what else he's, he's done. But he used to Clint be Mansell's in... done loads of stuff. He did yeah. some music for Mass Effect and he, yeah, he's, he's, he's really good. The, the way it starts though, it's like, it's like, duh, 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 shh, <laughs> like with the shotgun. It's like, <laughs> oh my <laughs> god! Oh, amazing. <laughs> I, yeah. I think it's really cool how they like they 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 managed to fit in so many kind of like graphical kind of uh, references when you when you when you're like your source material is like so low fidelity and this is so high fidelity that they managed to get that to translate. I thought that was really kind of clever. Do, do, yeah. do, do you know what I mean? Well, they had the they had the the Doom three before that, which I personally didn't get on with at all. I've I, I finished it, but I I really didn't like the what they sort of tried to turn it into like a a survival horror game with the torch like alternating between the torch and the gun. The torch they got the gun. They were they showing off that out eventually. That's, yeah, that's yeah, I heard about that. Because they were they were very. I mean, one of the big things about Doom three was it was one of those games at the time that the, no machine alive could actually run it at full detail or something ridiculous. Yeah. It was like yeah. the first crisis. But but the, the, I think the thing about Doom three was they had a real hard on for their dynamic lighting. Yeah. Um, and That's I right. was I remember I was reading an article on on Reddit earlier on uh, where they were saying actually no one's no one's really done that kind of dynamic lighting until now. You know, Doom Doom Three was what is what twelve year old game now? Two thousand four, I think it was. Got to be something like that. I yeah. I, um, I try and, so and use it was... wherever I can. Yeah. Um, it, yeah. The thing I built um, actually at the start of this week um, is is basically an Indiana Jones kind of thing where you've got like yeah. big Mayan totems coming down and spitting poison darts. So you have to duck out and spikes come out of the walls and swing pendulums and loads of ducking around. But the thing that makes it look cool is just a simple torch. I put a torch in in the player's left hand, and as you move around, that creates all these cool shadows. As you as you kind of move it, as it projects past the objects, it makes such a difference to immersion. It's such a simple mm-hmm. trick as well, but it's mm-hmm. basically just by having it mobile, you can. It's yeah, it's, it looks great. It looks so great. But you're going to get loads of that in VR games. Loads of dynamic lighting because of holding yeah. torches and stuff. Well, there's some cool light effects in Doom when there's like a sort of a, a revolving fan in front of a light, and you're yeah, just looking at it and going, that's a "Classic one." Yeah, this is just like it's not. That's just like part of the course sort of thing. You know, it's it's not even breaking a sweat doing doing that. How does the stuff. how does the gunplay feel? Because I mean, I remember as much as there were issues with Doom Three. I remember thinking, yeah, the guns feel pretty fucking good in this game. Well, they all feel great apart from the gun you start off with. It is the worst like pea shooter of any game ever it's pathetic <laughs> was it like can, a little pistol or something yeah you can upgrade it if you could be asked but um it's got like a power up on the alternate fire where like you might actually do like a, a regular shotgun blast worth of damage if you can be bothered to wait for it to power up but honestly you don't really need it with, with the glory kills you can use those to save on ammo um and which is yeah so you just don't really need it but yeah, there's like a weapon wheel that you can use to switch between guns. It slows the game down, but I've just been using the mouse wheel. I tried it with a controller just to see how it felt because I, I sort of wondered how it would like because with the triggers on a controller and the rumble, I thought that might be cool. And it did feel cool, but I've I've just gone back to mouse because I feel like that's how it should be played, really. Because you're not a masochist. 
<laughs> but I found I found it I found it perfectly playable with a controller. But I, I it's it's in, more enjoyable with with the one to one mouse. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, what have you been playing, Ad? Uh, Elite and stuff. Uh, or? I've pretty much only been playing Elite Dangerous in That's my cool. weekly gaming sessions. I've um, I can't remember what what it was that made me made me go back to it. But I I I just had that urge to, to have another look at it because I, had, I hadn't actually played it since last April. Um, and yeah, I've been really, really enjoying it. Um, I, I suppose it's a good thing about, about Elite. It is, it is a proper sandbox. So you, you have to find your own, I know it sounds like the, the, the box slogans, but you do have to find your own path through the game to decide what you want mm. to do. And I think if you're only, if think, if your only path through the game is to progress and, you know, earn money and get the next ship, you know, then it's no wonder people get bored and, and shoot off because it's it's really about you, you get out of it what you what you put in in terms of you know your motivations for for doing what you wanted to do. So I kind of went in there and thought, okay, um, I've got to be sensible about my goals. You know, the big ships cost a lot of money, and not just a lot of money to buy. I mean, the actual hulls are you know some of the modules you get on these big ships cost as much as the hulls to actually. You know, to, to, um, so, you know, you could buy a ship for 22 million, but it'll cost you 150 million before you've actually rated it. You know, you've got all the modules on there. And then you've got your insurance in case you smash it into an asteroid or something. <laughs> so what so sort of ballpark are you playing with at the moment then? Right. So well, what I've done is, um, I've been doing a bit, I've been doing quite a lot of smuggling. Um, okay. I had a, I had, I had a kind of goal, whereas I wanted to, um, I've always been kind of favoring the Imperial faction out of the three main galactic factions mainly because i like their ships more than more than the federal ones so with uh, one of the uh, with the horizons patch they released a new ship called um uh, the imperial courier which is uh it's like a small it's kind of like a multi-purpose ship it's kind of a small it's like about the size of one of the of the eagle a bit bigger than the eagle the start ship um but it's got better power source great shields um it's got three medium size weapons on it so it's quite a step up um, and it looks awesome so i thought that's going to be my my goal i'm going to get that money so i had a look into it and it cost about uh about 10 11 million credits i think to buy it and outfit it a rate it so i thought well okay i could probably do that um because i found that there's these long there are there, there are these long range smuggling missions which have been in the game for a while now i think since horizons have come out where um if you go out to, um, you have to travel about three or four hundred light years out from from the bubble where where most of the systems are. There are a few places, but there's one I, I go called Rabigo, which is like an imperial mine. It's an outpost right in the middle of nowhere. But you yeah. can pick up these shadow delivery missions, which um, are like take these slaves three hundred light years back into the other space, and we'll pay you like four million credits. And you think? Okay, that sounds like a pretty good deal. Yeah. Um, and you can stack them. So you can go, there's a bit of a, a lot of the hardcore people don't like it, but you can do this, you can do this thing where you can log into open play and then log out and go into solo play and then the bullet, the bullet boards refresh, bullets and boards refresh. So you can actually pick up quite a lot of these missions. So I was able to turn over in a couple of hours play, I was able to turn over something like uh, 20 million. Wow. Wow. Yeah, but <laughs> there is a drawback in the fact that if you get scanned anywhere between when you leave and any of your destinations, you fail all the shadow delivery missions. Right. Because the whole point is, if you get scanned anywhere, then all the missions get, oh, you're illegal cargo. You can still sell the, the slaves, but you won't get the big payout. So the idea is you've got to, and, and what happens is that when you leave there, you get interdicted all the time. You get you get picked. You're either either pirates or system authority vessels will pull you out of hyperspace. And the more missions you have, the more likely you are to get interdicted all the way. Oh, right. Oh, so, so you've stacked up a load. Yeah, uh, you can get. I mean, and, and the thing is, it's a long, long way. You know, so you've got to decide whether you fuel scoop because there's no way you'll you'll be able to carry. You know, you can get more fuel tanks, but then you can't carry as much cargo. So your yields aren't going to be fine. So what I did is I, put, I stuck a fuel scoop on my ship and I was refueling off stars on the way in. But then you really have to plan your route because there's a lot of stars between this place and, and the bubble which you can't scoop from. And if you run out of fuel before you get... So there's quite a lot of little nuance to it. You know, it's not 
overly complicated, but it's the kind of thing that if you throw yourself into it, it take, you know, it takes a long time to get out there. You know, it takes 40 minutes or so to get out there. Um, you've got to get back scooping all the way. And when you're scooping, you constantly got to be looking at your comms, other people contacts in the system in case they are a ship that's going to scan you. I mean, normally you get a little thing up saying, ah, the hall I've been looking for, or, you mm-hmm. know, um, suspected smuggler going into interdiction. So you've got to tail us out of there before you get caught up. So there's a number of tricks. You can submit to the interdiction, then boost away and try and get out of scanning range. But, um, a number of times I got, oh God, there was this one station where I was, uh, I was dropping in. And I'd kind of fucked up my approach and I hadn't, let, hadn't, I hadn't approached it the right way. So I had to go a long way around. And the longer you're out there near a station, the higher the chances you're getting scanned. So I'm starting to get my small oh, yeah. arms going here, going, I've got, I, it's taken me, I think this is one of the second, no, I, I dropped off a few missions, but I still had about 10 million minute, 10 million, million uh, credits worth of missions to do. Um, and I'm, I just sort of lined up station. I, I kind of boosted towards it. And all of a sudden, ship scan started. Oh, fuck, you know, and I, what, I, I tried to turn around and, and then I, I zoomed out and I, 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 I realized it was a, a federal ship, so I zoomed away from him, because if you get to above, like, one and a half K away from the scanning mm. thing, then they, it breaks the scan. You can also turn, t- you can also turn around and shoot at them, and that breaks the scan as well, apparently, but anyway, I was kind of panicking a bit. I, I zoomed out, I, I went into Super Cruise, uh, I looped around, and I came back again. Um, and I think, oh, okay, he's gone. And then just so I'm getting to the station again, I start getting scanned again, and I absolutely fucked it. I, I hit boost, and I meant to do something else. And I, oh, I mean, the, and I started boosting into the station. I wasn't aligned, and I was like, oh my god! And I hit, I actually smacked it, stacked it in the side of the station. My shield took most of it. My hull went down to about twenty percent. And, and then like ship scan came up again. I was like, oh fuck! I missed so much. And you're in it. I'm in it. I'm right in the middle. I'm going. Oh, so I just boosted away. I, mean, I don't know who was scanning me, but I managed to get away. Um, but uh, I, I, I went out again, and then that's right. I cracked my canopy, so I had uh, about seven minutes worth of air, and I thought I haven't got the time to fuck around here. I've got to get into a station somewhere. Um, and I, I, I went out. I was super cruised in, and I got interdicted while I was a super cruise. I haven't got. I haven't got time for this. <laughs> I got in with about 25 seconds to spare or something. Uh, I, I wow. actually went to a, a different station I found somewhere else and got in there, but it was real proper sweaty park oh, moments. Amazing. I've had a few of those. I mean, there's a lot of people saying, oh, it's too easy. Once you know what to do, you get away with it. And yeah, you can, but it's kind of not the point. The point is that you are, you, you're, you're putting yourself out there and you're saying, okay, well, I'm going to achieve something. And I, and I managed, I've done two or three runs now and I've earned quite a lot of money and I've now got a whole, I've got, uh, I've got quite a lot of ships now, um, and I, there are some people complaining about it, saying it's ridiculous that you can earn so much money. It's like, yeah, I know, yes, it is a lot of money, but if I got scanned once, that's the whole lot gone. Blown it. Blown, completely blown it, right? And um, I, I kind of think, well, I think they are going to nerf it a bit, because I think it, even I'm... For, for me, it's great. I play once a week, and I'm able to you know, earn enough money so that I can actually have a chance of achieving some of the, the bigger ships. Um, but I can see people that have spent a lot of time grinding, grinding through training, tr- trading or whatever, uh, are a bit pissy about it because it's, you know, it's like a lot of money earned for not very much. And there are some people farming it and saying, I've earned a billion credits doing this because I've just done this all the time. Yeah. But I think this is a bit like what you were saying earlier on, Pat, when, you know, about, um, if you can just switch off while you're doing it, then maybe why are you doing it? I, this is always the problem I had with people that complained, uh, or not complained, but I had a, some discussion stuff. I used to like mining in Elite when it when it really wasn't profitable at all. It was probably the most least profitable activity in the game. But I really enjoyed it, because I, mm. I enjoyed... Because I have to be in control of my ship the entire time. Yeah. I can't sleep. Can't I can't watch YouTube while I'm doing it. Which, uh, but, you know, people say, oh, it's great, I just, I just bang a force to the station, I watch my YouTube playlist. I'm like... That's not Why? playing a game. Yeah. What, yeah. That, what's the point of doing that? Yeah. Uh, yes, okay, you've made lots of money. You are progressing. Good for you. But you've spent all evening watching, getting, so saying, and then you turn around and say, God, the game's so boring. It's like, it's well, you're not don't do boring stuff it. then? It's, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's all so, agency. It's, it's how much agency it, it demands of you. And like, it, so, it, I think that game really does, if you get in the zone, it really like inspires you to kind of role play with it. it inspires you to absolutely. pretend you're really in it. And like, because I was getting, I was getting missions because I'm trying to get my empire rating up so I can, because you have to, no, if you have the money, but to get the bigger empire ships, you've got to be high ranked within the empire. So, and some of these missions are quite you know, difficult, but I, not difficult, but they don't earn you a lot of 
you know, don't earn a lot of rank per what you do. Mm. Um, but there was, I had, I had this kind of idea of myself of being like a, um, uh, an imperial like buccaneer type thing, you know, like yeah. put him up, I'll be a hired gun for the empire. The empire has always been good for me. So I'm, you know, a privateer for the empire. So one of these factions, there was, I think uh, I was, I was doing it and it was like, you know, I took, it was like a, you know, go and kill some of these targets. And when I was out there, I realized that I was, I was actually killing imperial and other imperial factions, federal ships. And I just, I, I did, I did, I think I killed two ships and I just felt dirty. Mm-hmm. So I just, I abandoned the mission uh, and I thought, I don't care if that screws up my rank. I'm not doing yeah. it. I've got my, I've got my standards, man. <laughs> so I was, That's so cool. it's been quite difficult because I've only been looking for like places where I can get into combat or do any of that interfaction stuff where it's an imperial faction versus a non-imperial faction, which has limited my, limited my answers, but I much more enjoy playing it that way because I feel like I've kind of set, this is the point of being a sandbox. Mm. You've got to set yourself a framework in which to play um, to get the most out of it, I yeah. think. Now, I wanted, I actually wanted to get into the power play stuff in Elite, even though I probably wouldn't have got much out of it, but I like the idea of allying with a faction and being targeted because I was part of that faction, if you know what I mean. Mm. Um, and it, for, for me, playing once a week, I would, I would not get out of it. So I kind of wanted to build my credit rating up just so I could have enough money not to have to worry about having to get more money, mm. yeah. if yeah. you know what I mean, yeah. and still enjoy it, not, you know, because I'd be quite happy flying around my peer of courier being a gun for hire. Um, I, yeah, so I've been, I've been, I've been really enjoying it. I'm probably going to, I'm going to give it a, a break next week for a bit, probably wait for till the next big patch comes in. Yeah, it's engin- um, engineers next, isn't it? Crafting yeah. and stuff. That's right. So there's there's some interesting stuff coming. So the engineers patch. I think this is where they're adding in content to try and make the game a bit more interesting for for those people that have played it a lot more and they've got all the ships they want and they've they've earned all their money because with the engineers patch there are these mystical people that can um, uh, increase your the the power of your ships in certain areas like. Um, in the beta, the, there's been some videos out where ships have been going like twice the speed of normal ships because they've they're, they've managed to find an engineer that's modified their drives, so they they give them these dirty drives which make make like a, a ship that was previously capped out boosting about 400 um, you know, meters per second up to over 800. Oh uh, right, know, a lot, you know, and that but they generate a lot more heat or they affect your shields or something else. There's a bit of a you know there's a a bit of um, uh, payment, you know, that you've got to offset it a little bit. Yeah. So the idea is that you you have to bring all this all this gear to the engineers, and then they will uh, collect craftable stuff, and they will craft these extra things for you. Um, uh, I think they're going to, int- but but it's I mean that's which is which is quite cool. But you have to um, you have to find the engineers to start off with, um, and then you have to get enough reputation with them so they will actually do it for you so there's a bit of a grind with it as there probably is in any kind of mmo game but um but but they've they're introducing things like the engineers can give you like a healing laser so um when you're if you're flying in a wing you can have a dedicated support role so someone's actually you know, you've got two guys taking on combat and someone else is actually boosting up their shields rather than actually trying to get the combat themselves so they're trying to put on all these things to make emergent gameplay shock waves things that will bypass the shields and just go straight to the hull but it won't do a lot of damage but it will knock them out of you know it'll, it'll basically stun missiles and stuff like ah, that cool, so, cool. Um, but there's, there's some other stuff in the patch which is kind of nice they're revamping the mission system quite a lot to give it a lot more character because ah. obviously the, mission, the missions in the game are they're, they're all text based go here and do this you know and this, yeah. Yeah, they're in with the feeling but they've, they're, they're giving the factions actual personalities so rather than getting a mission from faction X you'll get a mission from um, Captain Philip Harujima Flish, who's the who's the Grand Poobar of Faction X, oh, and, right. you, and depending on your reputation, you'll say, "Oh, so nice to see you again, Commander. Well, you know, well done. I love love you to work with you. Here's something else you could do for us." So they're trying to make it a bit more That's you know cool. relevant. That's cool. And I think the, the other thing I'm, I, that will be good is that they're acting. They're trying to give the game a bit more life, like. Um, so when you approach the stations now, you'll actually get um, uh, like comms chatter from the station controllers. So oh, nice. when you when you come in, they'll give you a call sign, you know, and say you're clear to land, uh, which is based on the first three letters based on your commander name, and then some other designation based on your ship. So uh. you know, and then you can talk to them like welcome back to the station commander, good to see you again, that kind of thing. And so you get comms chatter all the way in, which doesn't sound very much, but I think actually one of the complaints about Elite is that it has got a slightly lifeless feel to it because some of the stations are very similar. I, so they're, I always they're trying to bring stuff that up. that game really like, kind of made you feel alone 
Like it, it yeah. made you feel like separate from the whole universe that you're yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. and that's part of its charm as well, though I think as well. But yeah, I think that's a, it is a double edged sword though because sometimes you want to feel like there are other people in the universe doing the same thing you are. Yeah. You know, other than just c- commanders called Commander Itchy Nipples. Yeah, uh, yeah, or, or, yeah. whoever it is. Yeah, you know. they do seem to be making a play towards making you feel more like a commander than a spaceship. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I think that, that they kind of need to. Oh, and because the, another fact that's coming in later on in Horizon is you can actually give your, actually create a, a commander's face. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's going to be a character creator and stuff, which which should be pretty good. So, um, yeah. Cool. So, yeah, I've been really enjoying that. Well, awesome. uh, I'm yeah, I'm I'm really glad that they're still making, like, you know, advances with that because I'm, very much planning on giving it another crack when I get my Oculus, just to see how it works. And yeah, can't wait. <laughs> I played Banner Saga two, oh, yeah. which I I really enjoyed it. Um, it was it was more of the same, to be honest. They tightened up a few things. The end encounter wasn't anywhere near as hard. In fact, a lot of the encounters they'd let you just fail them, um, but it would have, it, well, especially in the final instance there there are likely story consequences for failing certain battles. Um, But uh, they did a good job in between uh, when you would rest up uh, as you're going along. Uh, There was like a training dojo, which they had in the first game, but all it was was just in the first game, you just go in there and it would just do a random battle and it would just allow you to try out a few tactics. Whereas with this, they gave you actual challenges that let you sort of learn the synergies between your different characters and stuff that was right. quite cool. Um, but the story's really great. They introduce a uh, a race of sort of... They're like uh, horse people. What are they called? Uh... What's a horse person? Centaur. Centaurs, that's it. Like centaur people. And they've got like, uh, when they have the ability to sort of move, then at- attack and then move again. So that was a nice little wrinkle in there. But yeah, they just added a few little uh, sort of uh, additions to spice things up a bit and continue the story, which c- takes place across multiple fronts. You end up uh, taking, you know, you end up being multiple prota- protagonists uh as as the story splits off into different parts of the world that it takes place in and i i really dig it uh it didn't take me as long mo- mostly because i didn't get stuck on that final battle it was like about 12 hours i think i spent on it um but yeah that's that was really neat uh i think it cost me as many pounds it was like 12 quid yeah um, but that's a great I got, the first, I got the first one in a humble bundle and i keep thinking i'm never going to play it why don't i just get it on my phone but then i think but I've got it on my computer and I don't want to spell it no. twice. There's a That's few a like that. Uh, so I stopped doing those humble bundles. It's just doing me in. Yeah, I've got like uh, I've got like Transistor on my PC and I keep seeing it on the iOS store and I'm like, no, oh, I mustn't I, get I, it. I played about an hour or two of Transistor and I absolutely loved it. Uh, but I just I thought this is a game I'm really going to get stuck into, but I never got stuck into it. For some reason. Yeah, I really want to but play I re- it. I thought Transistor I played, was great. I played Mad Max the other day because I got, I'm on that humble monthly thing. That was the, that was the last game. Uh, but I think I'm going to cancel it. I, I, I just don't think I'm going to. I don't think I'm going to be spending that time playing meat space games. Not 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 for a little while. <laughs> but like I gave Max about forty minutes, and it was like cool cinematics, great atmosphere, looked great, uh, sounded great. Uh, but I, yeah, the, I, I'd spent like twenty one hours like shooting people in the desert. With You're like, like how do I get guns. inside this screen? Exactly. No, it's, it's more like. <laughs> It's like, it's like <laughs> really? I have to go back to pressing buttons to shoot people now. Uh, no, God, see you, third world. See you later. It just, yeah, it just <laughs> fell apart too quickly. Banner um, Saga is literally like looking at a, 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 a freeze moving from left to right. Like, like animating a tapestry. 12 hours, most, most of it, with yeah. isometric battles in between. It's like, it's like looking at a painting and then playing chess. It's so <laughs> abstracted from that. You'd probably yeah. appreciate that more, to be honest, because it's I not probably even would, trying. Yeah, to exactly. Do that. Because that's the thing. That's the thing. Because Mad Max is trying to do that. Yeah, that's that's exactly it. That's exactly it. I'm totally happy to play 2D point and click adventures or simple abstract puzzle games, whatever. But there, there's there's totally a space for those. But yeah, it's just if if I want to shoot something. I want to shoot it now. <laughs> yeah, it. yeah. That's no, no, it's fair enough. Once you've once you've kind of broken down that wall, 
it's uh, difficult to go back. I saw Mad Max was a fiver on CD keys, so yeah, oh. if it's pretty cheap to get hold of. I thought it was all right. I finished it, but there wasn't really a great payoff at the end. Um, you can kind of just play for a cross section of that game, and that's all you need, really. It's like yeah, <laughs> but um, I just wanted to give the latest Hearthstone uh, expansion a mention. They've done some big things to Hearthstone. <laughs> Shut up. You're about to be brainwashed by Blizzard yourself, Adam. So uh, yeah, well, I was thinking of going for the I was thinking of going for the Origins edition of Overwatch because you get you know because I thought oh that'd be good now and I looked at it and I think oh you get all these Overwatch characters that go into all these other Blizzard games, none of which I play. Yeah. So fuck that. Um, well, yeah, okay. So Hearthstone, they've um, they've done some stuff where they've decided that they're going to split the game in half and there's going to be like standard mode and wild mode because the problem is what's happened is they keep adding these expansions and basically flooding the game with hundreds of new cards every time so uh you're ending up with uh, it's it's becoming impossible for them to balance it so what they've done is they they've said like there's wild mode and if you want to play with your deck that's made up of all the cards that you've earned from all these expansions over time, then you can go into wild mode and play them there. And so you're not going to be ranked, but you can still play your game and what, whatever. Uh, standard mode is only going to work with the last two expansions. So that's all they have to worry about. So it's meant that the cut, the deck that I was working with, um, I've had, I've had a bunch of my cards disappear because I like playing ranked. I like to know like how I'm getting on. I want to go up the ladder and see how high I can get. Um, so, uh, yeah, so I've, I've gone, Oh fuck. What do I do? Um, I've, but but uh, they start off the expansion by um, th- they they put in loads of quests. So all you had to do was like win two matches and you'd get like seven decks of cards. I haven't paid for any new cards and I've got basically all the cards I need for my deck because I basically went on some forums and looked at what other people were doing who had a similar deck to mine. And so I got those cards really easily. I've modified it a little myself and I'm doing OK. I'm not I'm still I'm not owning like I was, but uh Believe it or not, I was doing all right in this game because I play it every fucking day. Um, but, <laughs> but but the whole uh, theme this time it's called um, it's called Whispers of the Old Gods, and the, it's all Cthulhu or Cthulhu oh, as cool. it as it is. So uh, basically, everyone they give you the the Uber card, which is worth ten mana, and that's called Cthulhu. And what it does is when you lay it, it does whatever it's uh, attack. It basically it does whatever its attack and health are in damage as soon as you lay it to ra- ev- whatever's on the board, random damage everywhere. Um, and the idea is that all the other cards that are in this expansion, not all of them, but a lot of them, they all buff Cthulhu. So uh, every time you're laying these, it's giving, it's increasing the value of Cthulhu. So if you can survive long enough to play him, then and buff him even like accordingly when you do lay him it's uber uh, there's another card i've got that once you lay him if he gets killed because of course any player worth his salt is going to want to get rid of this card as soon as possible because especially if it's buffed um if i've got another one that's like a doom lord or something uh, if i lay him then i get him back so it's it, i love hearthstone i'm i'm totally into it uh it's it's a really uh simple game but well it's yeah, it's like all the best ones, I suppose. It's it, it takes a little a little bit of work to get into, but uh, yeah, Blizzard are just fucking geniuses. They know exactly what they're doing. Yeah, I did I did have a, I did have a crack at Hearthstone, but I found the whole um, you can't do anything if you don't have an active internet connection. Oh, it's a massive pain in the arse. When my when I was because I was playing it on the train, and I was just oh. No game just stopped working <laughs> yeah it does Got its it. best oh. to reconnect you if it can pick it up but if you get into a like like if i put get to stratford i was getting to stratford and you know without yeah. that or i would get to liverpool street and because i play it walking along <laughs> i don't i try not to now because i feel like a bit of a dork but um like uh I, I was going for a phase as soon as i get to liverpool street yeah my game would pack in I'd be like god damn it <laughs> I want to go well, home, but I want to win this game. End. Yeah, yeah, it's like really annoying. <laughs> but no, I play it on my. Yeah. Lunch. We, need, we need satellite internet and AR glasses so we can never stop playing games. <laughs> yeah, it's just because the action of it's so easy. You could just, you know, it's it's less hassle than writing a text message. Just bit going. Okay, yeah, that's it. Yeah, 
and then wait for them to have their turn and you know but kind of kind of difficult to organize your shopping with hearthstone though i should imagine yeah yeah a little bit <laughs> but you're uh you're going to give overwatch a go are you ad i certainly am i have looks cool i have in fact broken my embargo and pre-ordered it because i'm that excited about it mm. and i didn't even play the beta i don't know what's got into me I've, got, I've, I've had a massive rush of blood to the head i barely played um, the beta but i could already tell that it was your kind of thing from what i played yeah it. well it, it was surprisingly enough i didn't get on too well with tf2 um but as as you know i was i was absolutely addicted to team fortress classic and i'm kind of looking for but i've realized that that's kind of something that i am missing in my game repertoire i've spent i you know those kind of games, yes, okay, there is skill ceilings and I'm going to get my ass handed to me half the time. But this, what I like about Overwatch is it really isn't 1v1. Yes, there will be 1v1 battles, but the whole point is um, it's about if you don't support your team and play with your team, you're going to lose. And yeah. and, and I like those kind of games. I, I like team play. So um, And it looks, fucking hell, man, it looks so polished. I mean, I, I don't... Blizzard, you know, they've... They've barely put a foot wrong in the last 20 years as far as their game output is concerned. And the, the quality level that I've seen on this, it's, it's uh, w- what attracted to me uh, about this probably more than anything else was the fact that um, every game, every uh, not every game, but a huge number of the AAA game releases that have been released in the last couple of years have been really shoddy on release. Really shoddy. Um, and the feedback about the beta for this has been unbelievable in terms of how positive it is. You know, unbelievable. There's so many people saying didn't find any bugs at all. It was really smooth. Didn't have any problem finding matches. The gameplay was amazing. Um, and I just kind of think, how many more boxes has this got to tick before I actually buy the bloody thing? Yeah, I had a little, um, I had a little run around with Tracer mostly, who's got like yeah. a little blink ability. So you can yeah. sort of like zip about, which fe- makes you feel incredibly empowered because you've got guys yeah. just like stomping around with guns and you're like, ha ha, bye. And you're just yeah. zipping around. Um, you've got guys that lay down huge shields that you can, that you can hide behind and, t- and get a good look of what's going on before you have to be vulnerable. Um, a lot of the, uh, the, the map I played, you were escorting, uh, like a, big sort of truck payload, isn't it? yeah it's like a payload yeah. you've got to get it from a to b um and the the map's really well designed there are a few that had like bottomless chasms of things to fall down um which happened quite a bit as i was blinking <laughs> yeah. around um, but there's like about <laughs> five five or six different characters for each uh like class i suppose cause yeah. there's ranged support defense and something yeah, else there's, there's, there's attack defense support and tank yeah um so and yeah you need a you need a good spread of them all the way through yeah it it's tells like you it tells you if just, you're if you're deficient in a particular yeah. class so but the whole yeah one of the one of the things people are saying about it is the fact that is you've got to keep switching up characters as the game progresses so you've got to react to what's happening in the game yeah switch out to the heroes the best complement it you know if you've really got a you know, if you're really getting bogged down, you've got to get flankers out there to try and get into the enemy and, and make a breakthrough. Mm. I, but I, I love the fact that they're all, they're not, they're not mirrors of each other. They're, they no. all have roles, but they're all very, each character is very, very individual and different. Mm. You know, Winston is the big gorilla who's one of the poster boys of the game. And what I like about his stuff is he's, he's just about, being really disruptive. <laughs> He's not about just like standing there and letting the bullets soak. He he no, he uses jetpack to launch in and just bait the ship back up with his hands and throw people off ledges. Yeah. You know, and which which completely breaks up a defensive line, you know, and, and that gives your your team a chance to push in and do other stuff. Um I I think all the characters are so well designed that they I think all of them will be fun to play in different ways, but I think there are enough characters that everyone, no matter what your style of play is, you can find you know, you can find your niche. It's not like just six characters of different flavors on each side, like it is with TF2 or eight or eight or nine or whatever classes it is. So, um, yeah, so that's releasing on the 24th of May, which at this time of recording is next week. Yay. So, um, yeah, I'm, I can't wait to get my teeth stuck into that. I'm welcome to anyone who wants to join me. I'll put my name on the podcast notes or something and you can come and beat the shit out of me in game and i'll love it <laughs> yeah if i hadn't pulled the trigger on doom i might have joined you but uh yeah i don't know if i'm going to be able to stretch to that as well next month i'll see how it's going if people are still playing it next month i might give it a shout 
Yeah. Mm. If it's as good as it says it is, I'll probably be playing it for a while, I should think, because it's the kind of thing that, in my gaming time, I can fit really nicely. Because I played Mass Effect 3 multiplayer for months and months, because every every match is different. You pick it up, just play it again. You know, it's good fun. Yeah. This has been the Not Playing Podcast, in partnership with notlistening.co.uk, where you can also hear myself and Ian... Uh, remember him <laughs> talk about movies and TV on the Not Watching Podcast one day uh, and Adam Ash and Will talk about all manner of funny things on the Not Listening Podcast you can email us at notplayingpodcast at gmail.com or you can tweet out or follow us on Twitter at notplayingpod you can find the show notes of this show at notlistening.co.uk and if you're listening to us on iTunes then please do give us a review anyway that's all for now thanks for listening see ya see ya bye I suck at Call of Duty